Well, the calendar tells me that we are well into spring, so I think it's probably time we did some outdoor projects. So today we're making some big outdoor clay planters for the dolls landscaping. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, we're going to start our large planter with a strip of craft colored cardstock. This is an inch and a half wide by about eight inches long. And I'm going to start by taking the dull side of a knife. I would use my scissors, but they're clear across the room. And I have this knife in my uh, clay stuff, in my clay tools that are right next to me. So I'm using this. All right, we've kind of pre curled it. Now it won't bend. We need something about an inch in diameter to wrap this around. I find that my acrylic roller for my clay is just the perfect size. Use whatever you've got that's the right size. You can adjust this the sizing on this. I'm going to pre-roll around here. You can adjust the sizing to make any size pot you want. I'll give you complete dimensions of the finished pot when I'm done. And then you can judge how big you want to make yours from there. Now I'm going to go back and make a mark at about where the overlap starts. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not sure if I'm just getting over a cold or if, sign or if spring allergies have started or if it's both. It's probably both, quite frankly. Considering the pollen count, it's probably both. So I'm using a nice thick glue. Now you do want a nice thick like tacky glue. Putting that there. I'm going to spread it with a toothpick. And you want this covered pretty thoroughly, but you don't want a lot of excess glue. And this will need to dry completely before we go to our next step. I recommend doing this the, the night before you're going to work with your clay or the day before so that it has a good 8, 10, 12 hours, even 24 hours to dry. Um, you want this glue completely dry before we start adding clay and put it in the oven. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue there. Now I get asked every once in a while, because this is the same method I use when I'm doing my cookie jars. And I get asked every once in a while on the later cookie jars why I use the paper core. There's a couple of reasons. Let me tell you our next now we're just going to roll this as tight as possible and as straight as possible so the reasons i'm using a paper core to build these things on this is a much more stable core than trying to use clay for the beginning steps it gives me a nice smooth finished interior if i want to display if i want to have this clay pot so that it's not got a plant in it i can because this is going to be a nice finished interior on my pot. Now, since this is a longer, wider strip, it doesn't really want to stay. So I like to put a paper clip right where these come together. That way it stays a little better. The inside seems to stay fine. It's this outside part. Now this needs to set off to the side and dry and be sure and clean your clay roller or whatever you use to um, form that around and when that glue is dry I'll be back and we can start building a clay pot. Alright, let's start layering the parts that are going to make up our the walls of our clay pot. So I have here approximately half of a block of caramel colored Fimo. Um, this is quite old clay, so I did have to do quite a bit of conditioning to get it usable, but it's almost always salvageable. Now, let's see if I've got enough off or if I'm going to have to get more. So I'm going to roll it out to about the thickness of these two craft sticks. I've got a craft stick on each side so that I can get a nice level piece of clay. Now we don't need a piece big enough to cover the whole pot yet. This is just going to be our first layer in our center. Let's see if I can cut a nice straight line there. And I want 
be about that much of my cardboard core covered. And I don't know if I mentioned, this is actually one I made yesterday. Um, it's not the same one I just did on the video, it's one I did yesterday so that I could make, I could get this video filmed a little faster today. So now I'm going to make sure that this is long enough to go all the way around. It's almost, so I can make it just a little bit thinner. As long as it stays fairly even, it doesn't have to be perfect on this layer. Or it doesn't have to be perfect on any of them, really. That's what meets now. Almost meets, so that's fine. I have TLS here. And I'm going to coat the inside of my clay with TLS because TLS works as our glue. Anytime we are attaching raw clay to anything other than raw clay, we want to use some TLS. That means to the paper core or to a partially baked piece, which we will be doing because this is going to get baked a couple of times. In fact, right now, I am going to bake this. First, I'm going to trim that so it's nice and neat there. This seam is not going to show, so this seam, I don't care if this seam is perfect because this is all going to be covered up. So I am going to go and bake this for 10 minutes at the recommended temperature. FEMO, I'll have to look up my FEMO temperature. I don't remember. TLS's recommended temperature is 275. I believe FEMO is the same. My, since my oven tends to drift, I tend to set my oven at 250, knowing that during that 10 minutes, it's going to go back and forth from 250 to 275, and that way my clay does not overheat, and it still gets baked. So when this is baked and then cooled to room temperature, very important, it has to cool back down, I'll come back and we can start adding some shape. All right, this is baked and cooled, and I have rolled out another chunk of clay, and this time I used some craft sticks that I have glued together. So this, this is two craft sticks thick. I don't really, I don't have a good place right now to hook, to set up my um, pasta machine that I like to use for clay, so hopefully I can get a place figured out to do that. But for right now, I'm rolling it by hand because it's quicker than figuring out where to put that. So I did not cut that very straight. So I'm going to make sure I have enough to go around and I'm a little short, so that's okay. Just try and keep it as even as you can. Even pressure so that it stays fairly consistent in thickness. I can, I can get that to work. It's a little thicker, a little wider than I want it. So this is how we're going to start building that rounded shape that we want for our um, clay pot. I want this fairly thick. So again, we're using TLS because we're putting raw clay onto baked clay this time. Now, this is going to be a little slippery. There, it actually grew a little more than I wanted it to. Let's cut out a little bit. And I'm going to start by using my fingers. And what I want to do is I want to round that sharp edge. It's a pretty simple 
movement that we're making here. I'm going to turn it around and go the other way. And if my clay was sticking to my fingers, I would put some cornstarch on my thumb to help my thumb to slide. And I probably will need to on the next layer. If you're not able to get it to smooth with your thumb, fingers, you could use a clay tool, a ball tool, or one of those silicone brushes that people are using on a lot of different crafting uh, videos. I should look into getting one of those. I think that would be really good for smoothing clay. All right, that's good enough. Now, I'm actually going to go ahead and bake this again, simply because I don't want this to move when I put the next layer of clay on. So I'm gonna bake this for 10 minutes and then allow it to cool down to room temperature again, and then I'll be back. All right, this is baked, so now it's not gonna go anywhere. And I, off camera, I went ahead and rolled my clay out. It's fairly thin, it's thinner than it would be from the craft sticks. I just want something that's a nice, thin, fairly even sheet of clay. And I actually wanna cut it, hopefully I've got this, yeah. I want to cut it so it's a little bit longer or wider than the clay pot is going to be tall. I'm going to cut one edge. And it's okay if one edge is kind of messed up there. Let's get an approximate amount that this is going to need so that I don't set it enough. Let's see if I cut that too. That should be fine. By the time I get it worked around, it should be fine. So we're going to put some TLS on this. And this tends to, I find that mine grows a bit in length as I work it around the, the shape. So that's why I cut it a little short. I can always add a little if I have to. And once again, TLS, because I bet you can say it with me, we're adding raw clay to baked clay. All right, doesn't have to be a lot. Now line up the straight cut edge with whatever side is going to be your bottom. And yep, perfect. And now start working this around. And you might have to do some trimming on this bottom edge because you are making the clay actually smaller. It's okay if this folds. We're actually going to cut that though because I don't want it to fold it in. But on the top, I'm going to cut a little bit off here. we want to fold in. It's okay if it tears a little, you can fix it. This way, our terracotta continues. And don't worry about this being perfect on the top. Once this part bakes, we're going to come back and add a rim and every one of these pots is going to be slightly different shaped. Um, this is my second one and it's definitely different shape than the first one and that's okay. I'm going to kind of roll it in my hand, smooth it out. And you see now that work that we did to make that, that last strip of clay on there. Now let's see if we can fold this down. Hopefully you're not hearing that too loudly. Why is it every time I turn on the phone, or turn on my camera to record, there's a dump truck dumping a dumpster? Okay, I am going to end up trimming this. I wasn't going to, but I'm going to have to because it's just growing too much up. The one I did the other day, I was able to actually fold it and keep it folded. But that's okay because we are going, like I said, we're going to add 
a rim. But I want we want clay down inside so that when we look inside, even if we never put soil and um, plants in here, you look inside, that will disguise that inner core because our our craft colored cardstock matches well enough down in that in that um, cavity that we won't notice that it's not clay all the way to the bottom. But it will be a nice smooth inside. All right, now we're going to do a little more, one more step before we put this in the oven. This clay is kind of stiff. Excuse the creaking table. I swear my table's haunted. I wanted to this about the thickness of the two craft sticks again. And for mine, I found that this particular cutter is just about perfect to cut the bottom. Now, make sure you're going to the bottom. Don't attach this to the top. And we are putting this on raw clay, so we don't need the TLS this time. And I'm going to do that. <sighs> kind of blend this seam together. Now, if you want to put an embossed design on your clay pot, like I've seen a lot of the real pots that have like um, etching in the sides, or I thought about even getting a rubber stamp and stamping a design in it, but I couldn't find the one I wanted. All I could find was holiday ones, and I didn't want to put a Christmas design on it. <laughs> I don't know where the one is. Set a ones are that I want. Now make sure that your pot is standing straight up and down and it's the shape you want. My bottom is trying to push up so I am flattening it out there. We are going to bake this for 10 more minutes at recommended temperature. And when it is baked and cooled to room temperature, um, let's fix that seam there. When it's baked and cooled to room temperature, we will come back. We will add a rim to the top and bake it one final time and see how it looks. So I'll be right back. All right, so here's our clay pot, all baked and cooled to room temperature. In fact, I baked it yesterday. This is the next day. So let's finish off this top. Now, you could do so many things. I don't remember what I said yesterday about that. Um, you could have, when this clay was soft, used some rubber stamps to make some impressed images into this or tools to do that. You could also, at this point, while we are adding this, you could add some decorative pieces to, of clay to this. You could make some little tiny flowers or a wreath or whatever. Uh, you could add more snakes of clay to make, um, the, uh, make decora decorative areas on your pot. Now, I'm just going to put a very simple snake up here. Um, but there are so many possibilities. If I wasn't doing this on camera, I might do a fancier, like maybe braid some clay and put up there. But doing this on camera, I'm limited by what I can do because I have to keep it, I try my best to keep it in camera. And a lot of those more complicated designs, I really need to have them where I can see them better than I can having them where you guys can see them. Um, 
hopefully in the next couple of months I can get a different camera setup figured out and new tripod and new places to put camera and stuff and maybe a second camera and that will allow me to get and not only get you guys into a better viewing area but me a better viewing area also um, so we'll see how that goes but in the meantime at that. I like to cut that at an angle. And my snake is not perfect. But I think it'll be okay. And I might have to trim this more. Now it will be it will it will move around on you. And there we go because the, the liquid clay is very slippery. Come on. Let's get this. But when you're doing this, not trying to do a video, you can take your time and really get your piece the way you want it. And you'll have a lot more flexibility of having to take, the, of being able to take the time to do that. For video purposes, I think this will do just fine. So I am going to bake this at recommended temperature again for a full 10 minutes because we want that TLS to really cure. If it doesn't cure all the way, it will remain much more cloudy. It'll show a lot more on our finished piece, and also it won't be as strong as it will be if we bake it for the full time. Probably off camera, I will spend a little bit of time fiddling around with this interior seam to kind of minimize it. But when I come back, this will be all finished. I'll show you this one finished, and I'll show you the one I made earlier as a kind of prototype. So I'll be right back. All right, so here is our plant pot all finished. I love how it turned out. I'm not going to put soil or anything in it right now. I'm just going to put them empty on the front porch. We'll show you the one I made kind of as a prototype to test out my design. You'll notice they're not the same. Every time you make these, they're probably going to come out different unless you make the multiples at a time. Also, I want to show you both of these because these are the two pots I made. This is what I have left from a full new package of female caramel. Well, new as in I just opened it, not new as in I just bought it because I have a bunch of female caramel in my stash and I'm trying to get that used up. So this is what's left of a full package. So you will probably need a full, you know, to go get some clay if you don't have a, at least a half package to make each one. I really love how these come, came out. I might do a variation on these in the future. I've got an idea, I just haven't figured out how to make it work yet. So we might, we might make a variation later. And we'll probably plant these on a Tuesday video when I figure out what I want to put in them. So let's move over to the front porch of the dollhouse and see how these look in place and look at them next to the dolls so you can really get a look at the scale. All right, here's a look at our plant pots on the porch next to Mrs. Doll. So you can see they're a good size outdoor planter, and I think they'll look really neat with some cool plants in them. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure and hit that like button. Leave me a comment. What would you like to see in a future video? Uh, go on over to the blog post, and hopefully I'll have some photos over there of what we did so that you can, and I'll have a written out directions for how I made the pots and some of my thinking as I went. Uh, if you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye!